It's the Daily Dog. Hey y'all, welcome back to the Daily Dog. Thanks for being with me today as we end another week here on the channel. It has been a great week and I am excited about today's big time version of our Masterpiece Friday series. Of course, we are listening to Yes, that's Masterpiece Friday enough. We are listening to an entire side of an album. That would be Masterpiece Friday enough. However, Today, y'all, it's a special occasion. We are doing ritual Nous Sommes du Soleil, the entire side four of Tales from Topographic Oceans. From yes, we are completing the album today. We did the Revealing Science of God back all the way back in episode 259, the Remembering, pretty quickly now. Uh, we did episode 461, the Ancient was uh, episode 472, and today Ritual is episode 483, and I am glad that you are with me. Uh, this uh, is their sixth album, Tales from Topographic Oceans, released in 1973, and as a reminder of the concept of this particular album, um, the impetus came from the writings of Paramahansa Yogananda uh, in his book, The Autobiography of a Yogi. And in that book, he describes these four big pillars of Hindu texts. And John Anderson uh, took inspiration from that, and then he and Steve Howe led the way in convincing the band to undertake this pretty epic and wide-reaching subject matter. So uh, in the uh, Revealing Science of God, we were relating to uh, the Shruti Hindu texts, and that uh, being ideas and information that is handed down by word of mouth, orally, right? And then we move on to the remembering, and that song relates to the Smriti, uh, referring to the things that we remember or we retain, especially the things that we remember reading and then understanding, coming to an understanding of. And then we move on to the ancient track three, side three, and that uh, one relates to the uh, Puranas, uh, referring to the things that are ancient themselves, especially the sun, which features prominently in that particular tune. And then now in the ritual, we are honing in on Tantras, which are rites or rituals. So they got it right, I think. Uh, all four of these different uh, tracks then uh, are... Uh, centered on these fundamental ways that we can connect to that which is bigger than ourselves. We can meditate, we can find meaning as we continue on in our journey here. So uh, I'm pumped to get to it, y'all. It's a long track. It's a little over 21 minutes. I've got my special uh, uh, Grado headphones out for today. Looking forward to, uh, to hearing this. We've got John Anderson on lead vocals, harp and percussion. Steve Howe is on guitars and uh, backing vocals. Chris Squire is on the bass and backing vocals. Rick Wakeman on the keyboards and Alan White on drums and percussion. For our listening today, I am making use of the Stephen Wilson uh, remix and remastered edition of this album, which was released in 2016. So friends, let's get it. Uh, this is Ritual from Yes. Off we go. It's Ray sounds like it sounds like a big dominant extension. It's a D major chord, but the A, it's fifth, the fifth of that key, for lack of a better word for, for, for now in the bass. It's an extension of a dominant sound. We're waiting for something else to happen. Turns minor. Okay. We're off and running, aren't we? Major. Back to major. Still in D. Steve Howe shine. 
beautiful. Just beautiful. It's over a, uh, the tonic now. And there's the five. Such great players. I mean, you get a great lick from, from Rick, and then here comes John with layered vocals in, going right along with the guitar, and then Chris is over there just going, I'm just playing my bass. You know? This is much more what I would consider conventional yes than especially what I heard on side three. Um, it's kind of back to their more commercial sound that I heard in side one. Doubling in the synthesizer before and the voice and the bass. Now with the guitar. Hmm. And again, Chris is just off doing his own thing. taking a stroll around the playground and ended up back where they started. before the first lyric than any band I've ever heard. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, that's such a clean sounding guitar. I heard that. Did you hear that? Oh, close to the edge. That sounds like a tonic. I think that's the same one. Now up, up a step. I thought it was the same one that we were on, which would make that an E. A just resolved back into that D. Nous sommes du soleil. We are from the sun. Is what that lyric means. Effervescent. It's just light. And by that I mean like 
buoyant. It has no heaviness at all in it. Life seems like a fight. Let them run, let them chase, let them hide between. Constant doors will open eyes as life seems like a fight. Really bright uh, up in E major compared to where they were in D, uh, major and minor for most of the first part. love is true will help us through the night till we're coming home again our life seems like a fight that's a little bit of uh, a rehashing of um, Side one, revealing science of God, right? Nice. Okay. Maybe we'll just stand a while. Surely we can go. Dreams are sent to us with courage. Cuts them to the soul. Minor four. They went down to B. If they were in E, then they're in B now. Wow. 
glad they're letting me rest for a little bit. But Rick's back there just... meditative state and it's there's an intense amount of information maybe being revealed but it's it's got that rhythmic drive I mean this is related to ritual and rites those are things that we actively participate in right with movement with sound, with rhythm, you know? section Alan is still in the show back there he is hitting those drums Drum line. This is ritual. I think of a drum circle. I mean, what's more ritualistic than a drum circle? Everybody joins in, you add your own rhythm. sense of pitch. I have no idea. And I think I read about this section. They said at one point, I think all members of the band were playing a percussion instrument. I think Rick's trying to tune in a radio station that's just out of reach. It's got to be tempting bigger than Tom's. 
More lyrics. So. Building to something. That massive pitch sound keeps just intensifying. a spiritual journey, y'all, if you really allow it to be. They're so intentional with the way that they treat you as a listener. That was beautifully delivered. And then John gets to sing to us. Hold me, my love, hold me today, call me round. Hmm. It's a love song. sure, but I think they got back to where they started, which was D. It has a ring. It has a ring of the, the, like the beginning does. The guitar work in this song is next level, y'all. something that like naturally occurs I would think of the golden hour you know where the sun's going down the day's work is done you've learned what you can from that day take a moment and enjoy it and enjoy the scenery you know we've done all of this work we've done all of this discovery that's a move towards the end
a true free and calming breath at the end of it. Talk about a masterpiece. Friends, um, that may be, I think, my favorite track that I've heard from Yes since Close to the Edge itself. Uh, what a remarkable way to end that album. Uh, I am happy that uh, we've gone relatively quick uh, with these sides. We've listened to a lot of this album in the last six weeks, uh, which is something we don't typically do unless we're doing whole albums at one time. But this is such a long album that I decided to break it up into sides. And I just was more and more curious the more that I heard and dug into it. And so I didn't want to wait a very long time between uh, sides like I did between uh, sides one and two. So I'm just pleased to uh, finally get to the end of this. And I think that's my favorite side on the whole on the whole album. Um, that being said, I have homework to do, y'all, because now that I've experienced the whole thing, I know that y'all that love this album will tell me, well, now you have to go back and listen to the entire thing and literally hear it from beginning to end uh, because there are uh, correlations in some of the motifs that are used and the melodies that are drawn across that, that you're going to um, uh, be, I think, unlock uh, more easily when you listen all in one session. That I'll have to do on another day. Um, the thing that astounds me about this particular um, selection is the musical pacing, especially towards the end. Um, it's, in my opinion, it's one of the hardest things about songwriting or composing to learn how to do well. And for me, it's analogous to uh, how uh, book authors do this when they are telling a narrative type story. There is a climax, a build up and a climactic point where everything happens. And then uh, how uh, that gradual build up is managed. Is it a slow burn? Is Does it rise with intensity? Uh, how quickly do you fall off? Uh, does it throw you for a loop? How long does it allow you to process what has just happened by letting you continue to 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 be in it uh, but in a slightly different uh intensity level right um learning the timing of pulling that off is one of the hardest parts of my own personal journey as a composer because it takes so long sometimes to come up with uh the, just the right sound that we want to give to to the listener and we're like well it's taken us you know six hours or six days to come up with you know with that that perfect thing uh, let's move on they should hear something different and i'm like no they've just heard you know 20 seconds of it let them have more you know let them experience this in real time and so what i heard with that rhythmic buildup that was the actual taking place of the ritual. That's what got me to move. I got to participate with the band members. I didn't have my own percussion instrument, but surely I can, you know? And it, it, a ritual is, I think, at its most effective when it's a group of people that are all engaged in a similar activity. And that can become tantric right? And it can open up our minds. The rhythms and the continual uh, nature of that can just allow our brains to, to break free from what's been kind of plaguing us. And, and we can be open-minded to the things that need to come out or the things that need to come in, uh, in any uh, given circumstance. Um, uh, you know, rituals are common in in spiritual and religious um, uh, services and and um, and events, uh, but they don't have to be connected to anything supernatural or otherwise. It can just be meditation. It can be uh, just listening to your favorite tune and getting lost in the moment. You know, that's 
that's enough. And uh, Yes does that for me as much as any band that I have been listening to on this particular Daily Doug journey. And uh, I always love coming back to music from Yes, a truly, I think, singular band. Uh, uh, just, just wonderful. This is a fantastic uh, album. If you are interested, I think, in uh, the intangibles. Uh, in 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 the search, in the discovery, and being open to things that you can't quite put your finger on or understand. If you're one of those people, uh, like I uh, think that I am, uh, I think that this album will really speak to you. And uh, it has for me, and I look forward to future listens. But that's all for today. Thank you all for hanging out with me through uh, this particular episode, but through the entirety of this four-arc series, uh, listening to Tales from Topographic Oceans from the band Yes, their sixth album released all the way back in 1973. Thanks, you all, for being with me. We will see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.